In this video, we're going to talk about the camera within VizRT Artist. Within VizArtist, you're actually looking through a camera the whole time. And to access the camera, what we have to do is come to this drop down up here above our main tab bar where it says container. Now beneath here, we have an option here for camera. So when I click on camera, it shows us our camera editor. And immediately you notice this number one is highlighted. This one here refers to this one button within our camera selection on the render window. So when I click on my number one button, it also gives us numbers 1 through 16 and a front, back, left, right, top, or bottom. That means we have 16 cameras at our disposal to choose from. We also can look at it from the front, back, left, right, top, or bottom. And whenever I change one of these numbers here, it's also going to change it up in the camera editor. So if number 2 is active, it now means we're looking through camera 2. So to actually see something, what we want to do is drag something into the render window. And I'm going to go into my server here and use an object. And in an earlier exercise, we created this globe object. So I'm just going to use this to demonstrate a little bit about the camera. And since we do have camera 2 selected here, if I jump back to 1, you'll notice a slight shift. And if I go to 3, you'll notice another slight shift. And to 4, another slight shift. If we go to 5, again, a shift, but from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, you don't notice any shift. All of these past numbers that we clicked on all have the exact same camera settings, means that they're all at a certain value, the same value right now. However, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all set or offset a little bit by default. So I'm going to jump back to camera one here and I'm just going to click on this button to get rid of that little box and I'm going to jump back into our camera setting here. Now within our camera setting we can also make it active by choosing these options up here or by this button down here. So whichever way you want to make a camera active that's what you can use. Within the camera editor we have things like position here so we can move it to the position X, position Y, and position Z. We also have a pan a tilt and a twist. We have a zoom, a center shift X, and a center shift Y. There's also a relative position with X, Y, and Z. So we can use all of these things to adjust our cameras. We can also go into the views and adjust it this way. When I click on the views here, you can see that we have our camera one pointing at our globe. And if I change this over here in the editor to camera two, you can see that this is now camera 2 and it's offset a little bit from 1 and like we said 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all offset a little bit by default. All the other ones 5 through 16 are all in the exact same spot. So back to camera 1 here. We did adjust these here with our variables in the editor. However we can come right into the views here and work with the camera this way. So we have three points on the camera that we can use. We have the source or the head of the camera. We have the middle section here, which we can grab and move everything together. And we have the target of the camera, which we can click on and move as well. So right now I'm working in the top view, but we also have these other views at our disposal left. So I can come in here and move it up and down if I needed to. We also have a front view here. And if we click on any of these buttons here, we get the same options as in our render window. So we can change the cameras through this way as well. And if we need to look at a different perspective from front, left, or top, bottom, right, or back, we can change any of these views up in this window by clicking on the appropriate one we want. So if we made adjustments to our camera and we didn't like it, we can always hit this reset button. And as I come through and, and reset every button here, it takes it back to zero. And now it's back to its original starting point. So if we needed to keyframe our camera, we can do it this way. We can use our variables here in the editing window, or we can do it right within the views itself. So in this case, I'm going to do it right from the views, and I want my camera to fly around this globe. So I'm going to set a keyframe right there, and then I'm going to move it left. And I'm going to set another keyframe. I'm going to move behind the globe. I'm going to set another keyframe. And I'm going to move to the right side of the globe set a keyframe and then back to where we started and set another keyframe. Now if I want to see the animation path I can turn on my bounding box and I can right click in the window here and set my animation and here I have my handles which I can adjust 
And I also have these bezier handles, which I can adjust further to tweak the animation spline. So when I hit play here, you're going to see the camera fly around in the top view. And also within the render window, you'll see the result of what it looks like. So here goes the camera, it's flying around, and you'll notice that little flip that it does right there on the back side of it, which is normal when you fly around because it's crossing the plane, so it needs to flip back. Now there is a way to remedy that. You could keyframe that, but I'll show you another way to do that. Also notice when we hit play that it's not the most smooth animation, so we may want to smooth it out a little bit too. Now I'm going to jump back into the server to get to the scene tree. And notice within the scene tree here, we have our globe object, but we have nothing telling us that there is some type of camera animation. The camera animation lives within the stage now. And if I click on the stage, it tells us here what we have animating. It says pan, position, tilt. And just like any other animation, you can adjust it within here. So if you want to slow it down or speed it up, you can adjust it that way. If you need to adjust individual keyframes, you can select on them and adjust the individual keyframes this way too. Now I just want to get rid of my whole animation together, so I'm just going to drag this camera animation to the trash can. And then I'm going to go back into my cameras here and I want to reset from where I started. So I'm just going to reset everything. Now to the right we have these two options here. It's called tracking object. We have a tracking object position. We have a tracking object direction. So I'm going to use another object here to track this camera. So I'm going to go into my built-ins and my primitives here, and we can use any object. I'm just going to use a 3D object so that we can see it a little bit better, and I'll use this icosahedron to see it. So I'm just going to drag this into the scene tree. I'm going to move it out in Z space a little bit so that we'll be able to see it. And now I'm going to go into my views again. And here's our icosahedron. So I'm going to animate this around the globe this time. So I'm going to reset my timeline. I'm going to set a keyframe right here. I'm going to move it to the left. I'm going to set another keyframe. Then I'm going to move it to the back. I'm going to set another keyframe. I'm going to take it and move it to the right hand side now. We'll set another keyframe. And then I want to move it back to the original position and I'm going to set another keyframe. Now in the render window, you notice this little break up here. Whenever you see this, this means an object is crossing the camera plane. So the camera is actually going inside that object at the moment. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that. First, I want to adjust my animation spline a little bit. So I'm going to click on these handles and maybe just make it more circular or spread it out a little bit. And I can tweak these handles as well if I wanted to. So it looks pretty good right now. I'm going to go ahead and go back into my camera settings. So I'm going to click on my camera editor. And also I want to be able to access my scene tree. So I'm going to click on the server as well. Now I'm going to drag my two containers into this tracking object. So how do you know which one goes where? Not a big deal. You try it out. If you don't get it right, you just reset it and drag the other one in there. But we're going to drag the globe into the direction, and we're going to drag the icosahedron into the position. And when I do that, you can see a slight shift there. The icosahedron disappeared. And let's click on the views too, and now you can see how this camera is attached to that 3D object. When I hit play, you can see in the top view here, the camera now flies around. It's attached to our 3D object. And in the render window, it's a little bit smoother of an animation. And it gets rid of that 360 degree turn that it did when it crossed the plane. So from here, if you needed to adjust any type of zoom or center shift X or Y, you can also adjust these here. You can come into the stage and adjust the animation to slow it up or speed it up. So whichever changes you need to do, you can now do that.